friends! Today I'm gonna tell you how I'm planning to prepare for the JLBT N4 in July. I'm gonna walk you through all the resources I'm using, my study schedule and how I came up with it, and also gonna answer some questions I received on Instagram at the end. Let's start with the first topic, resources. So since the JLPT is targeting a few different skills like vocabulary, grammar, listening, reading, I chose a few resources for each skill. I'm also gonna link all the books and apps I'm using below in the description box. So in case you're still looking for some resources, you can check it out and get them for yourself. For vocabulary, I'm going to use the Nihongo Challenge Kotoba book and also the Lira app. In the Nihongo Challenge book, each chapter starts with a little text that uses the new vocabulary that is going to be taught in the chapter. Below that, you will find the vocab list with all the new words, the translations, and also sometimes more example sentences. On the next page, there are one or two more sentences that relate to the topic of the chapter, also with the new vocabulary words below. At the end of each chapter, you will find a few practice questions in the JLPT style that test if you are able to use the new vocabulary you've learned correctly. After every four chapters, there's a bigger test, testing your understanding of the vocabulary from the previous four chapters. At the end of the book, there are four more practice exams that test your knowledge of all the vocabulary you've learned in the book. There are also a few lists teaching you greetings, body parts, prefectures, keigo and other things. It also comes with an insert that contains the translations of the texts and the answers for the practice questions and the exams. My second resource I'm using for learning vocabulary is the Lira app. It's free at least for Apple and contains vocab lists for all the JLBT levels. It also has a built-in spaced repetition system. I put all the new vocabulary I learned from these resources into Anki. It's another spaced repetition app and I just like to have all the vocabulary and everything I'm learning in one place so that I don't need to go through every app and every book every day. For Kanji, I'm mostly using the Nihongo Challenge Kanji book. It contains all the N5 and N4 kanji, so 310 kanjis in total. Each chapter covers around 10 kanji and starts off with an introduction page that asks you to connect the kanji with the matching hiragana, for example. The next few pages teach you the meaning and the stroke order of the kanji and also vocabulary that uses the kanji. At the end of the chapter, there are a few practice exercises. After three chapters, there's a bigger test in the JLPT style that tests your understanding of all the kanjis you've learned in the chapters before that. At the end of the book, there are also a couple of tests that quiz you on all the kanji you've learned in the book. I also use the app Learn Japanese Kanji. I think I paid around like 20 euros for all the JLPT levels. Each lesson contains one to three kanji and teaches you the stroke order and vocabulary that uses the learned kanji. I really like that you have to write all the kanjis out by hand because I feel like they stick better in my head that way. And it also has a spaced repetition system built in that I'm using daily. For grammar, I'm mostly using the Nihongo Challenge Bumpu to Yomurensho book. It's basically half grammar and half reading exercises. In the grammar part of the book, it always lists the grammar points and how to build them on the left page. And on the right page, you will see a few example sentences using the new grammar point. The next two pages are practice exercises. As in the vocab book, there are practice tests after every four chapters that tests what you've learned so far, and also a few practice tests covering all the grammar of the book together at the end. There are also extensive lists that give you an overview over all the grammar points in the book, explaining them in English and translations of the example sentences. I also use an additional app for grammar called Bunpo. It's made by the same developers of the Libra app, but unfortunately this app is not free. I paid around 30 euros for all the JLPT levels. It also has a spaced repetition system that I'm using on a daily basis. On top of that, I'm also using Anki for grammar revision because I put all the sentences from Genki 1 and Genki 2 from the grammar parts into the app and also put some explanations for each sentence below. So I'm always doing my repetition that the app gives me on a daily basis. For reading, I'm of course using the other half of the Nihongo Challenge Bumpo to Yomurensho book. This book has 15 chapters that cover the reading practice. Each chapter starts off with a short text one question that tests your understanding of the text and also a short list of the new vocabulary that's appearing in the text. The second book I'm using for reading is the Shinkansen Master Dokai book. The book teaches you a new reading skill with each text, for example, figuring out who's the agent in the text and also the best ways how to go through short, medium and long texts. There are also mock tests at the end and the list of useful grammar points and expressions that are often used in written texts. 
I'm also trying to participate each month in the Mini Immersion Book Club, where we always read the book in Japanese together. This month we're reading the Naze Doshite Kagaku no Hanashi. That way I'm hoping to further build my understanding of texts and also up my reading speed, because I heard there isn't actually a lot of time for the reading part in the actual exam. For listening, I'm using the Shinkansen Master Chokai book. Similar to the reading book in the series, the book teaches you different skills, like listening out for intentions, proposals, verbal expressions, etc. The book comes with a CD, but you can also download the audio files from the official website. There are also multiple mock tests at the end, like they would appear on the JLPT. I'm also planning to listen to the podcast Japanese with Shun. He's basing the difficulty of his podcast on the Genki 1 and Genki 2 books, so they're around like N5, N4 level. And they're always just a few minutes long, and he's always explaining new vocabulary that doesn't appear in the Genki books at the end. So I also find the podcast really helpful to broaden my vocabulary knowledge. For actual practice questions of the exam, I'm going also through the Shin Nihongo Go Hyaku Mon book. It's by the same publishers that also published the Nihongo Challenge books and also the Sumatome books. Like the title says, it covers around 500 questions about kanji, grammar and vocabulary. Every 90 or so questions, there's also a little practice exam. I'm also getting the JLPT exams from earlier years that have been published by the Japanese Foundation when I get closer to the exam. I'm also planning to make a separate video on how helpful I actually found each resource after the JLPT. So please make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on the video. And also please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful so far. Now that we've talked about the resources, I'm gonna explain to you how I came up with my study schedule and what it contains. But a quick note before that, I've already gone through the Genki 1 and Genki 2 books in the last two-ish years, so I already have a good base knowledge about vocabulary, kanji, etc. So I don't need as much time to prepare for the JLPT. So if you don't have any experience with JLPT and for materials, please plan a little bit more time, because otherwise it would be a little bit too stressful, I guess. And I'm planning to study around two hours each day, so about 14 hours a week, to consolidate my knowledge and also discover any gaps in my knowledge, for example, words I haven't heard of so far or grammar points that I'm really bad at. I put my study schedule together at the beginning of March. The first step I took was to look through all my resources and see what resources I have for each skill. Then the second step I took was to estimate how long I will need for each resource. Then I made an overview in Notion, where I listed all the resources in a table so that I can see how many resources I have for grammar, for example, for listening, etc. And I also color coordinated everything so that I don't get overwhelmed of all the resources when I write my goals for each month and can see like yellow means listening, for example, or green means grammar. And then the fourth step was that I made an overview. So for each month I put in the resources that I want to go through so that when I write my weekly study plans that I know okay I plan to go through the whole book for example in March and that means I have to go through a quarter of the book each week so that I can estimate how much I need to do this week and hopefully reach my goal at the end. So I'm gonna tell you all about the goals that I have set for the next month but for that I need to look at my iPad because this is a lot of information and I can't memorize everything. So for March I planned on finishing the Nihongo Challenge Kotoba book because I've already started in February with the book and I think I was like halfway through so I think it's a good goal to work towards because I know most of the words already and there are always just a few words for each chapter that I still need to learn. I also want to finish the first part of the Nihongo Challenge Kanji book and the first part is basically all the N5 Kanji because I know all of them but sometimes there are a few readings that I have forgotten or like a few vocab words I haven't learned yet for example that contain the Kanji or for example counting is not my greatest strength so I had to learn a few readings concerning like the number kanji and like the dates for example. I'm also planning on finishing the Bumpu app because I've been working on the N4 part of the app for quite a few months now and I only had a few lessons left so I wanted to wrap it up quickly. And I also want to go through one part per week of the Shinkansen Chokai book and also do 
35 questions each week for the Shinihongo to Hyakumon book. So about five questions a day. That's all for March. In April, I want to go through all the vocabulary in the Lura app that's in the N5 section to see if I've missed something. And I also want to finish the second part of the Nihongo Challenge Kanji book. So the second part is all the N4 kanji and I also want to go through them and see if there are any words that I don't know or any readings that I have forgotten, for example. Next up, I want to finish half of the Nihongo Challenge Bunpo book because I basically know all the grammar points that I need for N4, but I still have a few that I struggle with. So I only want to like, read through everything really quickly and do the exercises for the grammar points that I'm still struggling with and also do the practice tests so that I see if there are still grammar points that I think I might know well, but can't answer the test questions for correctly. And then I also want to finish the whole Nihongo challenge Yomo Densho part, so all 15 chapters, because the texts are really short. And then I also want to finish one part each week for the Shinkansen Master Chokai book again. On top of that, I also want to listen to one podcast episode a week from the Japanese with Shun podcast, and also again answer 35 questions a week from the Shin Nihongo Go Hyaku Mon book. So that brings us to May. In May, I want to go through all the N4 vocabulary in the Lira app and also finish the second half of the Nihongo Challenge Bunpo book. I also want to finish the first part of the Shinkansen Master Dokai book, so the reading book, and also again do one part of the Shinkansen Master Chukai book. And still also listen to one podcast episode a week and again do 35 questions of the Chin Nihongo Go Hyako Mon book. And then we get to the last month before the JLPT. And for that, I want to finish the second half of the Shinkansen Master Dukai book and also listen to two podcast episodes per week. Go through the Genki listening exercises again, maybe. I'm not sure if I will have time for that, but I think it's also a great exercise to do them again and also practice the exams from the Japanese foundation like the real JLPT practice exams and also revise the Shin Nihongo Go Hyakumon book so every question that I've gone through I want to go through again and see if I still have some questions that I'm struggling with maybe. I didn't plan so much in June because I still wanted to leave some room for maybe grammar points or vocabulary etc that I'm still not comfortable with so that I don't over load myself with new stuff to learn in this period. At first I feared that my study plan might be a little bit too cramped and a little bit too like chaotic but after working with it for two weeks I think it's doable especially if I allocate my time efficiently and don't waste any time while studying. I also got a few questions on Instagram about the JLPT and I'm gonna answer them now. So the first question was are you learning by yourself or taking classes? I used to take Japanese classes in 2019-2020 in uni for one semester and we went through the first half of the Genki One book in that class but after that I've always been studying on my own. How long do you prepare for the JLPT? As I said earlier I've been preparing like for the last two-ish years with Genki 1 and Genki 2, like if you want to count it as preparation. But for the more intense preparation, I'm learning for about four months. And the last question is, how do you learn and revise kanji and the grammar points that you've learned? So for my kanji repetition, I basically only use the Learn Japanese Kanji app because I really like the space repetition system that's built inside of the app. And I also really like, as I said before, that you have to write the kanji, so it sticks better in my head that way. And for grammar, I put all the example sentences from the grammar points I've learned into Anki and repeat them on the daily basis, like what the app gives me on that day. And I also like to write one sentence every day in my Japanese journal in Japanese so that I can use the grammar that I've learned in describing like my day, for example, so that way I can remember it better. I know this video was quite long, so thank you if you're still watching. And if you have any questions regarding how I learn or the JLPT, please leave them in the comments below. And also let me know how you are planning to prepare for the JLPT. If you know someone who could also benefit from the video, please share it with them. And if you want to see more about me learning Japanese, please check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye!